we're going to talk about some other ways to assess the model. But before we do that, we need to go back and talk about a little bit of notation. So one of the things that makes logistic regression a little bit complicated is that we have um, true values uh, and fitted values, and there's not just one of each. So in, uh, in linear regression, we had our yi, and then we had our yi hat. So the yi, that was our true value, and the yi hat, that was our fitted value. But uh, in logistic regression, we've got our actual values like P, which is equal to the true probability of yes for a particular X. And then we have our fitted P hat, which is the number of yeses over the total number for that particular X. And then we also have the model. So we've got a pi, uh, which is the true probability of yes from the model. And then we've got a pi hat, which is the fitted probability of yes from the model. So instead of just two things, we've got four. And the other thing to notice is that an individual data point does not appear here. So we don't have a yi. Um, if you want a p hat, you have to pick a particular x, or usually you pick a range of x, and you find the p hat for that range. So let's think about this a little bit. So if I wanted um, from my Wickham data find, to find the p hat for people ages 18 to 20, I would find the number of people who were alive in that age range, 18 to 20, and then I would divide by the total number of people, 18 to 20. So um, I have some R code here. It looks like there were 52 people who were alive out of 54. And that's a 0.96 for that p hat for that age range. So that is the observed proportion who were alive. Um, and then this relates to something called the empirical logit. So logit, remember, is the log of uh, the odds. Um, and uh, the empirical part means that it is from observed data. Um, it's, it's kind of real. And so if we were going to find the empirical logit, we could find the logit of 0 0.96, which would be equal to the log of 0 0.96 over 1 minus 0 0.96. That's the log of 26, which is 3.26. So that would be my empirical logit for ages 18 to 20. And as we've talked about, people don't have a ton of um, intuition about log odds. You know, your log odds of being alive being 3.26. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. Uh, rather than the probability of being alive, 96% chance of being alive. Uh, I understand what that means. So this relates to assessing the logistic regression model because, of course, there are conditions for logistic regression. And uh, in linear regression, we had the L, I, and E conditions, uh, which was our acronym for remembering them. In logistic regression, uh, we don't have a nice acronym like that. We have three conditions, which are linearity, independence, and randomness. Um, and linearity is the one that you can check using a plot. Independence is still the thinking condition. And randomness is a thinking condition. So there's more thinking that you need to do for logistic regression. So let's just talk about these two thinking conditions a little bit before we move on to thinking about plots. So independence, um, we still have the same ways to violate independence. So if you have time units, you don't have independence. If you have spatial units, you don't have independence. Um, but uh, many other cases, especially in experiments, um, uh, you, you would have independence, so experiment, yes, you would have independence, um, but you basically need to think about are the rows in the data set or the observations, are they independent from one another? So with my Wickham data, um, were those women in that survey uh, 
were they independent from one another? And we'd probably need to know more about the data collection method because if they were women in the same family, they might not be independent. Or uh, if they were roommates, right? There could be similar things going on um, with the two people. Um, but if they were randomly chosen from that town, uh, probably they would be independent from one another. We could assume independence. And randomness is similar, but it's different. So randomness means that we need to have uh, something that's random in the, um, the assumed data gen generating process. So it needs to make sense that you're trying to predict if someone is alive or dead. There, there could be some randomness in that. Um, and then we often also want to have randomness in our experimental design. We want to randomly put people into groups or randomly sample them. Um, so, so those are the two thinking conditions. The last one is the one that you can check using a plot. But the problem here is that um, you can't just do something like, you know, plot uh, M1 like we did for uh, linear regression um, and have a plot nicely come from R. Um, it's much more complicated for uh, logistic regression, and we'll get into it when we do the lab. But essentially, um, in order to check uh, the linearity of the logit, you need to produce a plot of the empirical logit. And that requires binning, like we were talking about before. So we found the p hat for 18 to 20, and I think that was 0 0.96. And then we found the logit of uh, p hat 18 to 20 and i think that was three point let's go back and look 3.26 so to make this plot um, i got r to divide the data into 10 equally sized bins um, and because they're equally sized they ended up being a little bit strange on the edges uh, so let's say that we've got sort of from like here to I don't know, sort of here is a bin. Um, you can sort of see them up here. Uh, things like this, and then we could draw this down. So we've got maybe here and then here, something like that. So uh, it's not exactly the same as 18 to 20. This is probably like 17 to to 22, something like that. Uh, but then we found the empirical logit, um, which actually looks to be pretty similar to that 3.26. It's 3 point something, it's almost four. Um, and we put that dot on the plot. And then we find the empirical logit for 22 to maybe 27, um, and we put that dot on, on the plot. And then we can see, you know, does, does this empirical logit plot look linear? Um, and this one looks pretty good to me. Uh, so there's a couple tricky things here. Again, we'll talk about it during the lab, but um, the plot that you get is kind of dependent on the number of bins that you produced. So I made 10 bins here, but if I had done five or 20 or 22, uh, I might've gotten a slightly different plot. Um, and then, of course, uh, it's a judgment call. So you have to look at the plot and decide if you think that it looks linear. All right, so that's some of the, uh, the conceptual stuff. Now let's move over to R um, and see it a little bit more in practice.